It's Royal Rumble weekend. It's Royal Rumble day. It's the day. If you can believe it, like, okay, so we're here for Drew McIntyre, obviously. We're here, we're looking at 2K23, but like, I always uh, uh, find it weird for the superstars who have to do stuff like this, right? Because, especially for someone like you, you know what a big deal the Royal Rumble is. If anybody knows, it's you. But like, this couldn't be more separated from like that. Are you sitting here right now, as you're talking to me, conscious of the fact that whatever it is, 12 hours from now, it's the Royal Rumble, or do you separate and go, once this is done, I'll hit the next thing, I'll hit the next thing, and then at some point it'll be the Rumble? At this stage, I'm able to separate um, things. Uh, back in the day, not a chance. All I'll be doing is standing here sweating, nervous, thinking about the Rumble, thinking to have enough cardio, <laughs> thinking, <laughs> oh my goodness, I hope I get you know, a good spot to you know, represent McIntyre as a character well um, in the Rumble. But right now, just with the years of experience and all the opportunities I've had to represent the company outside the ring especially, like nothing phases me now. Like Teflar, just relaxed all the time, loosey-goosey, playing the video game earlier, playing with myself first thing in the morning. You know, that helps you loosen up. And um, so the video game is awesome. I did. <laughs> I'm talking about playing as my character on the screen. Yeah, where did you guys feel Come on. people out there? But it's amazing, the graphics, just how realistic every year. I've been in the games now for like my goodness, like 14 years. It must be hey, around yeah. now to watch the evolution of the games, see how far it's come. And you know, a couple of years ago, it was in interesting, a bit of backlash in the old game, but, yeah. but they took the, the feedback and uh, made some significant changes that I clearly see right now. And the new technology, I don't know what it's called, the muscle technology, we can actually see the individual muscles moving yeah. as uh, the characters are walking. I get the sword entrance the way it should be, stabbing it down at the stage and leaving it there because I'm never going to use it in anybody. <laughs> so <laughs> things are right in this game. Yes, yes. And it's true. I feel like they, they overcorrected in a good way, right? Like the, the issues come up and they're like, you know what, the next time this game comes out, it just has to smoke. Everything has to be perfect. Yeah, the biggest this issue I had was like how pale and uh, non-jacked I was. <laughs> that was my feedback. I, was, I know there's all that other stuff, but yeah. you know, McIntyre, you know, needs a tan and some more muscles. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's, I would, You're joking, but like, you spend so much time getting jacked. It's like this is the time that that should be recognized. Yeah, when I see some of the action figures are looking a little slim, or yeah. <laughs> when I see the video game not quite as jacked as I feel like I'm at that particular time, I'm like, all right, well, why don't we try can, so hard? We can hit up Bill McKenna if the if the shoulders are not right on those Mattel figures because you don't craft yourself into an action figure to have action figures that don't look like you. You're right. You're you right. Yeah. And that's Bill. And, and the recent ones uh, are looking awesome, i got to say. Yes. I've been very lucky. Like The amount of uh, new action fig figures that come out the past couple of years, like some are so freaking cool. Especially like this, the cool thing about you know the sword and the, the kilt and the legs when you see it in action yes. figure form and I think about being a kid playing with He-Man and stuff. I'm like, all right, this is pretty cool. We get jaded sometimes and they go, and he's got a sword. What's he going to do with it? Stab somebody. Because yeah. we watch wrestling all the time. I say we because I'm like, still the biggest fan myself yeah. but then you think about you know the kids or whatever watching and going like, oh my goodness like that's their he-man or whatever on the screen or the people tuning in for the first time that watch outlander and the likes yeah. going whoa that giant scottish guy's waving a sword around well, the kids right like my five-year-old is like looking at action figures on a shelf he hasn't watched matches but he sees the sword and the kilt and the colors and your muscle and he's like Okay, that's going to be my favorite wrestler now. Yeah. And you got him for so life. So we actually, like, I try to think, because I too get jaded all the time, but I've, at this, again, stage of my life, my career, I'm able to go, let me just step here for a second, outside, have a look at it properly. Yeah. Ask my wife, who's uh, very brutally, brutally honest. <laughs> and she'll let me know, you know, what, uh, what the opinion is that generally goes for those that aren't necessarily watching the show. I also feel like uh, you've evolved into a wrestler, and maybe you've always been this way, it's just you're getting more opportunity to do it now. You and Seamus and Gunther, and there's like a group of you guys that I feel like just love hitting hard. And it's, it's, it, that, that part of this thing has been amazing to see and to watch it evolve into, into what it's become. I feel like Roman is kind of that way too, where like there are Roman matches where I'm like, you guys are killing each other. You enjoy that style. I do enjoy that side a lot. I uh, mean, it's done right anyway. Yeah. Uh, I don't want anybody breaking my nose or anything. <laughs> but no, I mean, to me, um, you know, that's what it was all about growing up. I love that physical style. Um, I love like watching the fans sometimes in the crowd. Like obviously, TV is a little difficult to do, but on live events in particular, you know, I can look into an audience. I'll see there's so many families that come to our shows, um, and you can maybe just see the the dad in particular, who's there, and he's mostly there just for the kids and. 
you know, maybe his missus is looking a little bit excited, a couple of the guys in their underpants, whatever, and it's just a little annoyed about, all right, we're at the wrestling for the kids, and all right, wife's looking at these guys, that's okay, but I'll just get through this thing. But then you can see them, one, getting into the shows that goes on, but in particular, they've got a preconception about you know, professional wrestling and what it is. And then when they see someone like myself or Seamus in there and Walter, sorry, Gunther, uh, laying into each other and he's like, wait a minute. These guys are hitting each other. Wait a minute, there's marks appearing on these guys. And suddenly I can watch them as the match goes on, kind of getting lost in it, lost in it. And I've seen them get up on their feet and lose their minds by the time the near falls start coming around. I was like, that's what it's all about. Yeah. I saw that guy right at the start of this match. And, you know, I might be off like on their, the, the story, but I can tell they're not quite into it as they should be. And by the end, when they get on their feet, that's the coolest thing for me. Because you got to think of every part of our audience and pleasing everybody. And if you got that... No physical style, and you know the next day that guy went to the office and went, I was at the wrestling last night. My God, these guys beat the hell out of each other. Yeah. So whatever you think about wrestling, that, that Drew McIntyre, when him and Sheamus were in there, they were battering each other. I was up close, I heard the sounds, I saw the marks appear, and there's no way of faking that. you become a master, dude. Like, just in this five minutes of talking, it's like, you figured out, okay, to get these little five-year-old kids, you gotta have a sword, you gotta have a kilt, you gotta have a thing. To get, <laughs> that's, yeah, that's true. To get their dads, you just got to beat the you-know-what out of people, yeah. and you get everybody. Yeah, and hopefully, you know, for anyone else in the crowd, uh, the female persuasion, they might enjoy where the, the kilt routine comes off, perhaps, oh. like a stripper, Ooh. as my wife likes to say. <laughs> Are you, uh, I mean, what's it like, as, especially as a fan, like as a guy who, like, has been eating, breathing, sleeping this business since you're a kid, to have one of those essential Royal Rumble moments. Like you're, regardless of who you talk to, some people say number one, you're a top five Royal Rumble moment guy forever now because of 2020. Like growing up, I'm sure you would rank Royal Rumble moments with your friends all the time. Have you processed that? That like, not only are you doing this for a living, not only are you in these great 2K games, but like you've got one of those Rumble moments. Yeah, that's wild. Um, it's awesome. I feel bad for Ricochet because he usually gets left out of the <laughs> out of the talk. He did set up uh, the Brock elimination for me. <laughs> yeah, it was helpful. Um, but no, it's insane. Uh, I remember the day of the the Rumble in 2020. Uh, I knew how big it was. I remember walking into not the arena anymore, the stadium. I'm going, wow, this is huge. We're over 40,000 people here. I heard something interesting might be happening potentially with Brock, which I was excited about just to do anything with Brock. But then, you know, to find out eliminating him and winning the thing, I was like. I don't believe you. This has happened before. I've been told something's going to happen, that it changes. It's literally happened as we're going live in the air in the past. So we'll give too many details on a podcast one day. I know Conrad's out there. We're like, <laughs> right, Drew, when you're ready, let's get out there and talk about potentially winning money in the bank until 8 p.m. one year. Um, <laughs> but now it's amazing. Like uh, when we had the, the Rumble itself and the way the story played out with Brock as a champion, so dominant uh, throughout the Rumble. And it got to the point where I was listening to the people. I was like, they starting to think Brock is just going to win and face himself in Mania. Yeah. <laughs> like, who's going to take him out? And then when I came out there, I remember i just been so focused. I've told this story a million times. Like, i just seen a star is born. And there's that moment where Lady Gaga's off the side of the stage and Bradley Cooper's singing her song. And she has that moment where she's thinking to herself, it's now or never. Hits the ring. I'd been the future for so freaking long that I was worried about <laughs> becoming, becoming the past without ever being the present. And I was like, this is my chance to finally become the present. Um, and march into that ring and seeing people come up. And it's not like I was doing that much to suggest that I was the guy to take out Brock or that uh, win the whole rumble. But people came up and was like, Drew could be the one to do this. And Brock took off the gloves and I remember I called him a bunch of swears. I don't remember what I told him, but I believed if he messes around here, I will beat his ass for real. That's what was going through my head at the time. And then the bump he took in the elimination from the Claymore. The fact uh, he laid there for so long uh, and, I, and I just hung out with him. I was not leaving. I was like, oh my God, he's still there. He's still selling. I'm going to hang out with him. Yeah. And I think Miz came down. I took him out, put him out. Brock was still there. Went, went straight back to him. I was like, as long as Brock was going to be there, I was not going to stop going back to him. And the way he put it over made me look that night. You know, really made me and then at the end to see Edge coming out I could go oh no yes that's what I was thinking right uh, it's amazing I was so happy for him when Adam's back I went, oh wait a minute this has happened before <laughs> the people have turned on the rumble winner <laughs> I'm gonna be one of those guys <laughs> but thankfully when uh, we got to the end and uh, eliminated Roman they reacted the same way as they did when I put Brock out it was an amazing amazing feeling <laughs> well, I mean you're a guy I could talk to you about wrestling all day uh, but the takeaways we got from this are number one Drew's muscles look amazing in 2K23, and that's important. And number two, who was his inspiration in his war with Brock Lesnar? Lady Gaga.
Thank you, Drew McIntyre. Thank you, Sam. Appreciate it, brother. <laughs>